Let's solve these problems. Evaluate the following integral. So let's start with 1. Integral of x squared cosine x dx. So we can actually apply here integration by parts. But I will not use the typical formula for integration by parts given by integral of u dv is equal to uv minus integral of v du. What I will use is the di method or the derivative integral method. So using the i method, we will choose a function to be differentiated and integrated from the given integral. So let's prioritize to choose the function that we can easily integrate. So it can either be cosine x or x squared. So actually both of them can be integrated easily. So I'll just use cosine x for the function to be integrated and then x squared for the function to be differentiated. And then on the side, we will just put alternating plus minus sign. So we can extend these alternating signs depending on how many times we will differentiate and integrate. So for the case 1 of the A method, if you notice that the function to be differentiated is a power of x, let's say x raised to n, we can differentiate until we reach a derivative of 0. So let's differentiate the x squared. So we will have 2x. And then differentiate again, 2x, that will be 2. Differentiating again, 2, that will be 0. So from here, we will stop differentiating when we reach the 0 derivative. And then we also need to integrate the cosine x. So integral of cosine x, that will be sine x. Then integral of sine x, that will be negative cosine x. And finally, integral of negative cosine x, that will be negative sin x. So from here, we can multiply these diagonal terms including the sine convention at the side. So we will have positive x squared times sin x plus negative 2x times negative cos x. So that will be positive 2x cos x and then plus positive 2 times negative sine x, so that will be negative 2 sine x. And then don't forget the plus c. So therefore, this is the final answer already. For number 2, we have the integral of x cubed e raised to 2x dx. Again, using the i method, we choose the function to be differentiated and integrated first. So I'll use x cubed for the function to be differentiated and e raised to 2x for the function to be integrated. So let's put sign conventions, alternating signs at the side. Then for the derivative, differentiating x cubed, that will be 3x squared. Differentiating again 3x squared, that will be 3 times derivative of x squared is 2x. So 3 times 2x, that will be 6x. Then differentiating again 6x, that will be 6. So let's extend the alternating sign here. And then finally, we can differentiate again 6, that's equal to 0. Therefore, we can stop differentiating because we already reached a derivative of 0. Then for the integral of e raised to 2x, so that we won't use any more use substitution, let's use the reduction formula for the integral of e raised to ax dx. It's simply equal to 1 over a e raised to ax plus c. E. So if you evaluate the integral of e raised to 2x applying this formula, the value of a is 2. So we will have 1 over a which is 2. So 1 half. Then copy the same function e raised to 2x. Differentiating this time 1 half e raised to 2x. So that will be 1 half times integral again of e raised to 2x. That's 1 half e raised to 2x. So multiplying 1 half times 1 half, that will be 1 fourth. Again, integrating 1 fourth e raised to 2x, so that will be 1 fourth times the integral of e raised to 2x, 1 half e raised to 2x. Multiplying 1 fourth times 1 half, that will be 1 eighth. Lastly, integrating again 1 eighth e raised to 2x, so 1 eighth times the integral of e raised to 2x, that's 1 half e raised to 2x again. So 1 eighth times 1 half, that will be 1 over 16. And then for the final answer, we just need to multiply the diagonal terms, including the sign convention. So for the first one, we have positive x cubed times 1 half e raised to 2x. So we have, so let's copy first the constant 1 half and then x cubed e raised to 2x. 
Next, negative 3x squared times 1 fourth raised to 2x. So that will be negative 3 times 1 fourth, that's 3 fourths. Then x squared raised to 2x. Next, positive 6x times 1 8 raised to 2x. So we have plus 6 times 1 8. So that will be 6 eighths, right? Or in lowest term, 3 fourths. Then times x e raised to 2x. Lastly, negative 6 times 1 over 16 e raised to 2x. So we will have negative 6 times 1 over 16. In lowest term, that will be 3 eighths. And then e raised to 2x. Then don't forget the plus C at the end. So therefore, this is the final answer. Okay, so now it's your turn. So try to evaluate this integral and just comment your answers.